I'm going to show how to use the gear component by building a little uh, balance that is geared. First we want to add some anchors so the pivot of the balance can stay in place. Make these large enough to see. And now the arms of the balance. And uh, as long as we're using version 0.2.7 or greater, I can set the parameters on the arms together, save a little time. Uh, so we want to give them gravity. The balance I found earlier today doesn't work well if, you, if there's no gravity. We're going to set the length to one meter, so we put each connector out uh, half a meter on opposite sides. That's the 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 here. Uh, and the moment of inertia, 0 0.008333. And I'll set the damping in, in both directions. This is just first order damping um, to be equal to the, the uh, inertia that's opposing it in each case. All right, let's connect things up. Hopefully have our, our members uh, constructed properly. One of them is going to go to the right and the other is going to go to the left. So I'll attach a, I use gears to a gear train to make these, uh, these two rods uh, stay at the same angle. We use a gear ratio of one to one and we'll set this kappa, uh, the restoring force the, of the sh gear shaft to 30. We want to make that pretty stiff. That's all we've got to do there. And then I want to provide joints so that these guys don't just thrash around when we twist them. So we'll connect the end of each rod to an anchor. And I'm going to set the properties of these uh, springs that are creating the joints. I'm going to set those to have no angular influence at all, just to hold the joints tight. Um, I'll make it 100 for K instead of 1000 so that it doesn't take extra time to run. Put the rods right on top of the uh, joints, the rod connectors right on top of the joints. because we don't want to excite these springs. Okay, so now we have uh, cantilevered beams in opposite directions connected by a gear train, uh, equal gear ratio, a one-to-one -one gear ratio, with a shaft in between that does have a finite elasticity that we can make it as high as we want. Let's run and make sure this works properly when everything's balanced. Let's change the gear ratio because that's what we're really doing. Make the gear ratio uh, 2 to 1. And the graphic, the orange gear train here shows that. So I can see that the angle of the right hand beam is going to change twice as fast as the angle of the left hand beam uh, by imagining these two gears meshing. The shaft doesn't impart any structural properties at all. It, it only is a torque connection, so it, it could simulate a, you know, a, a rubber tube or, or just anything. Um, if you want to have 
structural integrity between the gears, you have to put a structural member there. So that's that's what happens if one gear is smaller than the other. And I can test to make sure that torque is transforming correctly. Let's make a, a 4 to 1 gear ratio with equal weights on both sides. Obviously uh, the side with the smaller gear will be much more free to turn through a large angle. And that's what we see. But now I want to make sure that if I put one quarter as much torque on that side, uh, that the balance will will balance. So let's try doing that two different ways. I'll leave the length of the member alone and make the mass one quarter as big. And I should really, to keep things kosher, I should change uh, the moment of inertia as well. That only affects dynamics, but why not get it right? So now we're back in balance. I have four times as much weight on the left, a four to one gear ratio, and then the smaller beam on the right, lighter beam on the right. Anyway, so that's how you use gears.